So I've been playing World of Warcraft since vanilla, close to 19 years at this point. I've been actively playing the game for most of the major announcement throughout the years, but I think we just got one of the craziest announcements of the game's history, and this is called WoW Remix Miss of Pandaria. So WoW Remix Miss of Pandaria is a new piece of content coming with patch 10.2.7 that basically allows us to replay the entirety of the Miss of Pandaria expansion in the retail client. But there's gonna be quite a lot of twists that makes this a completely new experience. And they give some bullet points, it gives you a decent idea of what you can expect. So accelerated leveling and content, allowing you to take on nearly every quest, scenario, dungeon, and raid, create a new WoW Remix character starting at level 10 to adventure through the event up to level 70, a mountain of loot, get powerful items from everywhere, quests, chests, creatures, and bosses, customizable items allowing you to power up as far as you can go to take on tougher content, convert unwanted items into bronze which can be used to upgrade items or purchase cosmetics, and keep what you collect. Take your collections of transmogs with you into the war within. So in this new piece of content, we're going to create a new character specifically for it. We start at level 10. We're going to have super fast leveling all the way up to level 70. We're going to be able to take part in any content throughout the entirety of the Mr. Pandaria expansion, which include, in my opinion, some of the best and most beautiful zones in the game's history, two of the best raids in the game's history with Siege of Ogremar and Throne of Thunder. Throne of Thunder actually being the best raid in a lot of people's opinions, we get a bunch of new loot that's customizable that we'll get into later in this video, and there's a new currency system, so all of this new loot that we don't use, we convert into a new currency that we'll be able to spend on a vendor to upgrade any of the gear we're using and get a bunch of permanent cosmetic items. We've already seen some data mining. There's dozens of mounts and tons of new transmog items, and all of this stuff you're going to be taking in to the War Within. Not any of the power items, but any of the cosmetic cosmetics and any characters you level up in this event, all of that stuff will be transferred over to the main retail client and into War Within once this event is over. And the way they're splitting up all of this content is actually very interesting because there's going to be no time gating. Every piece of content, so all of the zones, all of the patch campaigns, all of the scenarios, all the dungeons, all of the raids, all of that is going to be available instantly when you start it. Now some of it you're going to have to be a higher level to do, but there's going to be no time gating. If you're high enough level, you can go do any content for Mr. Pandaria. And this is very interesting because we're going to be leveling up so quickly. There's also going to be ways to boost leveling that we'll also go over, but they split up a lot of the content into different level brackets. The most interesting part is that every piece of content scales up to level 70. So for instance, the 10 to 70 level bracket, you get the Jade Forest Zone, you get three different scenarios, you get four different dungeons, and no raids. So this is all the content you're going to have right when you start this event. That then, once you go up to level 20, you unlock the Valley of the Four Winds Zone, the Krasarang Wild Zone, and the 5.1 Landfall Campaign, which was a pretty big update in Mr. Pandaria, had this whole new campaign and new content. You're going to get five more scenarios, and you're going to get the Stormstad Brewery Dungeon. But then, once you get five more levels, which is probably going to take no time at all, you also unlock Kunlai Summit, which is another zone, three new scenarios, the Shadow Pan Monastery Dungeon, and you unlock Mogashan Vault, which is the first raid of Mr. Pandaria. So starting at level 25, you're able to start raiding, which is pretty crazy. And also keep in mind, while you're leveling up through these dungeons, these scenarios, and through these Mr. Pandaria zones, you're going to be getting this new unique gear. So you're not going to be just like getting normal gear, but getting levels crazy quickly. So all your gear is going to be bad. You're going to be getting all this new unique gear very quickly with all these cool new effects. So level 25, you could start raiding. Then once you get to level 30, you unlock Town Long Steps, another scenario, and another dungeon. Once you get to 35, you unlock Dreadways and the Heart of the Fear Raid. Once you get to 40, you unlock Veil of Eternal Blossoms, four new scenarios, two new dungeons, the Terrace of Endless Springs Raid. Then once you get to 45, you get the Isle of Giants and the Timeless Isle, which were both end game additions to the game. Once you get to 50, you get Isle of Thunder and the Throne of Thunder. That'll actually be one of the craziest spots to unlock because you just get to go to the 
the Isle of Thunder and do Throne of Thunder, Isle of Thunder being one of the best zones released in the game, and Throne of Thunder being potentially the best raid ever released. Once you hit 60, you unlock Siege of Ogamar, but past this point is where it gets very interesting, because at level 70, you unlock heroic raids. You get heroic versions of every single one of the miss raids, meaning if you're a raider, you could have started raiding at level 25 and potentially only done raiding up to level 70 and then once you get to 70 you can do heroic versions of the raids and also not mentioned here is that we know siege of ogremar has a mythic version which also if you didn't know mythic raids were added in warlords of drain or in the pre-patch so siege of ogremar is actually the first raid in the game's history that had a mythic difficulty raid so not only are we going to be able to experience all of the content of mr pandaria while leveling up but we're also going to have actual progression content once we get to level 70. Now you're going to need to create a new character to do all of this content and play Remix. So once this patch is launched, you're going to log into the game and there's going to be a new area to create a WoW Remix character and it's going to be on the retail client so you're going to have options of all of the races currently in the game. It also seems you're still going to be able to play all of the current classes in the game. So it sounds like you're also going to be able to play like a Demon Hunter and a Drakthir in Mr. Pandaria which is going to be very interesting. But this new character is going to start at level 10 and as mentioned once this event ends you take that character and any transmog or cosmetic items you earned from this event into the retail client of the game so these aren't going to just be throwaway characters these are going to be characters you permanently keep after the event which i think is actually pretty important for a lot of people especially compared to something like plunderstorm where you just kind of create a character and play and that character isn't permanent in any way but these characters are permanent you're going to level them up to 70 and they're going to be transfer it over to your main retail servers after the event. So this is also going to be a very good event for leveling up. But once you create that character, you begin your new journey in the Timeless Isle and meet up with the Infinite Dragonflight and Eternus who will set you on your path. So it's also going to be pretty interesting because there's kind of some story elements tied into the Infinite Dragonflight and tied into us actually going back into the Mist of Pandaria. Now, as we're going to be leveling up very quickly and even taking on raids while leveling up, we are going to need some gear to help us out. And this is where this new customizable gear comes into play. And first off, you're going to be earning all of these new unique items from everything. Quests, chests, creatures, bosses, pretty much anything you could potentially get gear from or do, you're going to be getting gear from. But this new gear is going to be pretty unique because each item is going to have their own identity with these new things called spell gem sockets. And these new sockets will come with turbocharged new effects similar to trinkets. And they also say that every time you loot new items, you'll have the chance for powerful new upgrades, allowing you to push the limits further and faster than ever before with uncapped progression. And as you progress, you'll gradually become more and more powerful as items will also give you increased permanent stats. But they also gave us some examples of different gems that are going to go in these spell gem slots. And we actually didn't get some of this information clarified because we got some examples of different gem categories, but we don't know how many items are going to have these gem slots on them if every item is going to have some slots we don't know how many different gems have all the different types we're going to be able to have but these things are very interesting so first off we have meta gems one of them being called life storm which when you equip you summon a storm which calls down five bolts of lightning every second each bolt inflicts a bunch of nature damage to enemies within 30 yards which is pretty crazy and during the storm three flowers grow around the caster after five seconds the flowers bloom restoring a ton of health and and granting haste to allies for 10 seconds. So this is just some massive ability that does a massive damage AoE every second, also grows flowers around you that heals everybody, that also gives everybody haste. And also when looking at all these different categories of gems, meta gems seem to be things that we only get one of. That's also why they seem to be very strong. But then we have Thundering Orb. You transform into a Thundering Orb, inflicting nature damage to enemies within 30 yards over four seconds. So again, I'm massive AoE. While you are a thundering orb, damage taken is reduced by 50%, movement speed is reduced by 70%, and you are immune to loss of control effects. So you literally become a big slow orb, take massively reduced damage, but deal massive AoE damage in a 30 yard radius. Pretty absurd. But next up, we have a Tinker Gems. Now, a pretty interesting piece of information is that 
these also show that these are bind when pick up and they're unique equipped to these specific tinker gems so it seems like we're going to be able to have multiple or a handful of tinker gems but you're not able to stack the same gem so first off we have hailstorm every three seconds build a charge of hailstorm upon reaching 10 stacks unleash a hail on enemies within 50 yards each impact inflicts frost damage and applies numbing cold a numbing cold reduces movement speed and reduces damage dealt but that enemy attacking also removes a stack of numbing cold so it could also be pretty interesting to stack up a ton of numbing cold on say a boss so they'll deal 10 percent less damage on like every attack then we have cold front your abilities have a chance to grant all allies a shield absorbing damage and applying numbing cold to all enemies within 50 yards and again numbing cold is the same thing and these two different tinker gems are unique equipped only to these specific ones these aren't unique equipped to like any tinker gems so you can only have one hailstorm only one cold front Front, but you could have them both. And there's also some more interesting ones. We have Tink Master Shield grants a shield absorbing damage equal to 20% of your total health, and this regenerates after 10 seconds of not taking damage. Could be pretty good. We have Fervor. While you are above 80% health, your attacks consume 2% of your max health to inflict holy damage equal to the amount consumed. So pretty interesting. You're basically killing yourself. There's quite a lot of interesting possibilities with these gems. And then we have Cogwheel Gems, and these seem to be utility. First off, we have Blink which is literally just blink teleports you forward we have sprint increasing movement speed by 70 percent for eight seconds that's just sprint from rogues then we have roll you roll a short distance that's just roll from a monk and this one is i think more interesting than people think because just being able to get some massive movement ability from other classes is pretty interesting what's also interesting is that on these it doesn't have the marker that these are unique equipped so maybe cogwheel gems you can only have one of as well that makes sense getting like sprint and roll on like a warrior or something could kind of be crazy but either way, this will give you a massive amount of mobility. And then the final piece of gear information we have is the Cloak of Infinite Potential. You'll also be able to earn an Artifact Cloak that gains permanent power increases as you play. Power you earn on your strongest character is shared with alternate characters created for the event to make leveling even faster. So you have the Cloak of Infinite Potential, which is a base cloak, and then when you equip, it grants the following aura, Time Runner's Advantage. The threads of time you find will be woven into this cloak, permanently increasing its power and time runners advantage gives you these following stats as an example 324 strength 1600 stamina 300 crit beach mastery verse and 324 percent increased experience gain and keep in mind as we just went over this artifact cloak also ties over to every one of your new characters you make so if you go make a level 10 get up to 70 massively progress this cloak which you can continue to upgrade it gives a bunch of stats and massive experience gain your next ult will just get absurdly fast leveling because if the stats are anywhere close to what's being shown on this cloak the experience gain is 324 percent and presumably you'd be able to keep upgrading that and as we already went over these characters you're making for this event transfer over after the event's over so this event is also going to be absolutely absurd for leveling up new characters if you've ever wanted to make like a specific class on a specific race but you never wanted to go through the time of leveling up from 1 to 7 and you didn't want to buy a boost this could be perfect for you i'm probably going to be leveling a ton of characters up to 70 because it'll just be super quick and the event just sounds really fun anyway so i'm just going to be making a ton of different class and race race combinations just to level up in this event just because I know they're going to be permanently added to retail. And as mentioned, there's also going to be a ton of permanent cosmetics and transmog items you're going to be able to earn from this event. And you're going to be doing this by using a new currency called bronze. So they go on to say, there's no such thing as a bad drop. And any drop you get can be converted into bronze. You'll be able to use this new currency to purchase upgrades and World of Warcraft account bound cosmetics. Head to the bazaar in any zone to purchase everything from a class transmogs to Mr. Pandaria mounts, toys, and more. This allows players to purchase items that were previous unable to obtain or difficult to obtain as a random drops by simply spending this new currency to add to their accounts collection. Now there's already been a ton of these items data mined, and this isn't just like old stuff from Miss Pandaria that's recolored or even just old stuff from Miss. There's also a ton of new stuff, like one of them being this back piece that's like a chicken coop with 
a chicken on top with a basket of eggs on it. So there's a ton of really cool new cosmetics. There was like 36 mounts data mined for this event. So there's going to be an absurd amount of permanent transmog or collection items that are just going to be added to your account. Any of the items that aren't power related, you're going to be taking to your main retail account. And there seems to be a lot of them. And the coolest part is this doesn't seem super grindy to get specific things you want because any item you're getting while playing this, you can convert into bronze. Any piece of gear you get, absolutely anything you get can be converted into bronze and you just buy the items you want from the vendor. So because there's so many items, it may be grindy to get everything, but if there's any specific item you want, it shouldn't really take long at all for you to get those specific items you're really looking for. But that's pretty much all the information we have for WoW Remix Mists of Pandaria. And I'm overly excited for this. As I mentioned, I've played since vanilla. Mists is my favorite expansion of the game's entire history. I absolutely love this expansion. I think anybody who actually played this expansion and played all of the content throughout it probably loves this. It's probably one of their favorite expansions, if not their favorite. But that's all I want to go over. So thanks for watching.